break dancing with, with cats. You know, I mean, we went up to um, Gisborne, B. Dean, and then, and we saw these cats come down baggy pants, and they say, "Oh, you guys do the Bob roast." You know, back then it was like Bob, B O B. Because when I came here, I say, "Oh shit, it's Pop," and they're like, "Oh, no, it's Bob." And I said, "No, it's, it's Pop," but um, because popping and break down popping came from Samoa to New Zealand, that's how it arrived here. You know, it didn't come from the state. Like, it, it is from the state. I went through Hawaii, went through LA, Hawaii, American Samoa, Samoa, and, and was brought here back in like in '82 or something like that. From from these uh, brothers, you know, came from the islands and shit, and they brought this dance. But since the brothers didn't wasn't good with the lingo and shit, they said that people are like, hey man, what's that new dance? Oh, it's the pop man. I'm doing the pop. You know, but it's supposed to be pop. You know what I mean? It's like how we put the S, how we put the S's in after New Worlds and shit like that. You know, so they're like, they thing going on. So that's how the pop thing came to New Zealand. And uh, stuff like that. I'm sure it's a more cats, and I know breaking came through the videos and stuff like that, with, you know, flash downs and all those other uh, videos that were out at the time. You know, even corny videos like New Wave artists would do a New Wave song, it got nothing to do with hip hop, but then in the end, somewhere in the video, you see somebody spinning on their back. And then we thought that was a hip-hop song, so we'll dance to that track when we go out to battle and catch. So, you know, imagine trying to dance to, like, uh, Billy Joel and shit, you know? Play so battles with Billy Joel or, or whatever tracks we're in, we're breaking in that. And then, um, the rapping, anyway, we went to Hamilton. When we went around the country, we met up cats like this, this cat here in Hamilton, H-Town. Back in H-Town on the big breaking scene. Uh, we went out for the Nationals, they had a Nationals up in uh, YMCA in Auckland. Me, um, our crew, um, Swerve's crew, and a couple of crews from Porirua, Porirua Street Rockers, Kinetic Energy, Simon Brothers from Newtown. We all hopped on the bus and we went to, uh, to Auckland to battle this Auckland cats. You know, it's like, man, you know, back then, like, you know how it is. Auckland's always bigger and better. So, you know, for cats like that, yeah, man, go test our shit in Auckland because they're bigger and better and we, we can be bad too. <laughs> so we went up on the bus to battle these cats and we had this, um, they supplied us with an outfit. And we thought it was pretty dope, like blue pants with some red shirts. We looked like a softball team. <laughs> we went up there, and um, and we thought like we we're, we're starting down, you know, Queen Street before the battle, and went up to the battle to the breakdowns competition. And the Hamilton cats came, came in, and they had all this silky shit, that all uh, satin, they they gives all made of satin. And honestly, we just like shamed down. We wanted to hop back in the bus and get home, because you know we we just looked like straight up ghetto niggas. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's how I met this cat here, and uh, cats like Texas, Face, and uh, Larson, B-Boy Larson. Yeah! Uh, the biggest mover of, um, of uh, Hamilton Hip Hop, and um, he died, but, you know, um, years ago. But uh, it was cats like that that inspired me and a lot of us, you know, to keep going with breakdowns, because we just networked with those cats back then. So this is how I um, met up with uh, the H-Town crew, and a lot of that crews in Tikawiri, they had crews in Rotorua all over the country. It was just mad, you know, B-Boy was out. But back then, we didn't understand about the culture thing. You know, we just danced because we love break dancing. Just like a lot of the kids nowadays are dancing because they like break dancing. You know, and they, they don't associate it with the culture. We didn't associate it with the culture until Beach Street. Even though when Beach Street was out, we still, oh yeah, we wanted to do, we're just made, taking a gimmick. We wanted to be grab artists. We wanted to be whatever DJ. We wanted to rhyme. We wanted to do all these things. And you know, the same thing for now, with the youth now, a lot of them don't understand the hip-hop concept. So very few out of, say, a couple of hundred, 500 breakers we might have in this country of the young people, there will only be about 30 of them would understand what hip-hop culture is all about. Right. And, um, sorry, sorry, Rose, did, did I pass it on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, I'll go into more about that. But uh, yeah, I got to pass it because my man is picking me out and shit. Okay. <laughs> anyway, peace out. Sean K.O.S. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Use the mic that we're using, yo. Quick tip. <laughs> yeah, um, my name is B-Boy Technique. Uh, H-Town Time Bandit, represent with Four Corners. And um, I kicked my career, my B-Boy career off um, back in 83. 
Um, I was just a young cat then. And um, because it, it, it just, because like breaking, it, it kind of like hit the, hit the country like a bomb. It just blew up and just, it, was, it was everywhere. You know, but, um, my name is Daryl A. Thompson. I'll tell you people my name because I consider you my family. People who know me as DLT pay 34 bucks for their privilege. Um, I'm so honored to be here. I waited like a good 20 years to come here, to be in a room with all you guys and all these kids here. Um, I reckon I started being boarding in 1976 when I went to the downtown Y in Napier and danced to uh, the Silvers, high school dance, into the Jacksons ABC, and then into uh, Flashlight by Parliament. And I seen uh, the big Afro skinny ass Horries from my ghetto <laughs> doing the robot, yeah. playing softball. And I knew that there was some weird shit going on. I didn't, it didn't have a name then. We just knew that we were freaks, you know. So uh, I lived to dance from that day, and I, the first thing I did in the b-boy world was a break dancer. <coughs> and I ain't gonna lie to you, I break dance for one reason, to get laid. <laughs> I don't want to yeah, be a super nigga. I don't, don't want to save the world when I was 15, you know. I go down the mall and there's a big circle of people staring at my brothers. So fuck, give me some. I was in it. Now, over the years, of course, I've matured into a father. Now I'm a hip hop dad. And uh, yeah, I've got a lovely wife and kids, so I don't have to get laid by anyone anymore. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I'm telling you why I got into this, okay? Now, I don't, I don't have that same feeling now, but that's the reason why I got down the mall and decided to keep my clothes clean get some game, get a haircut, you know, there was a very specific reason. Now, I come from a place called Blacksmith, or Mahu, and um, Marae Nui, they're all in Hastings and Hawke's Bay, and there's, there's just as many of you guys there, I've been to Otangare, I've been to ghettos all over our, our bloody country, and, well, that's the reason why I'm still here doing this, because um, b-boying, has, has allowed me to travel the world, meet millions of people, literally millions of people. And uh, I ain't gonna give that up for no bullshit, nine to five, you know, I can't. So, you all know what we do, and uh, I'm, I'm, like I say again, I'm just so honored to be in this room amongst all you, all your ancestors, or my ancestors, smiling down on us, trying to make this world a better place. And. That's it. As far as history is concerned, I started up our posse with Dean Harbiter, Matthew Harbiter, Aaron Thompson, and Ace. Okay? And Tidamwana Rapley, and Bennett Pormana, and Steve Romicum. Now Reese B's been in the posse. <laughs> he's there, he's DJ Ron. And uh, after the posse, I left in 1991 because me and Dean had a difference of opinion about the, the co-pop of hip-hop. So the next day I started the damn natives. Okay? We, we rock for a year, and then we have this difference of philosophy. This happens all the time. And the crew split. I, I go off and care about the world, and my bros went and done what they did. After that, I hooked up with these, I was getting pissed off with my brothers telling me that I was full of shit. So I, went and I got the most lamest rappers I could find in the country just to show my bros that I'll show you shit. And I got these two geeky white guys who couldn't dance, couldn't rap, and turned them into joint force. Right? And I tell you, I beat the shit out of those guys and told them, the three of us can kick all these niggas' asses. That's hip hop. You know? It's, it's brotherly battle, man. Me and this guy battled for years, but we are the best of friends. Uh, to be only hip hoppers can do that. You know? We can we can make up. 
Like, like all the DJs and all the graph writers say, there's no rules, we make it up as we go. That's it. It's like that. So, uh, I'm just so happy to be here. I've had this big ass cheesy grin on my face all week watching seven year olds rock in front of me. Yeah, 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 I kissed him. I said, where's the outline for a young kid? And he pulled out a little notebook like this big. That's a buzz for me. That's a buzz. I don't care about shiny black books with stickers on them. And I saw a, a seven-year-old kid out here the other day in the rain. I said, you're a b-boy? He said, yeah. I said, show me a move. He didn't even wipe the cigarette butt off the floor. It was a bang. So I just come here to smile and tell you all that. You are the fucking shit. Thank you. 